Hi everyone, okay it's time for another great Kasparov miniature. This time his opponent was Jonathan Spielman, the English Grandmaster. It was played in 1989 when Spielman was at the height of his game, easily within the top 10 of the world. He was and still is a fantastic player and famous for his highly imaginative and unorthodox style of play. Kasparov had the white pieces and opened with d4 after which came d6, e4 and g6 which is going into the modern defense where black allows white a strong pawn center and hopes to undermine it later. Play then continued with the book line c4, e5 and knight f3 which was the last book move of the game and normally play now goes bishop g7 but Spielman elected for the somewhat controversial e takes d4, which weakens his central control considerably and allows white a strong central square, at least temporarily, for his pieces. But like I said, Spielman is an unorthodox player and he had an interesting plan for this game, as you'll see. Play then continued with normal developing moves, first with Kasparov recapturing with his knight, and now bishop g7, knight c3, knight c6, and bishop e3 and d4 is becoming the focus of the game and notice here that Kasparov has Moroxy bind with pawns on c4 and e4 which makes it very difficult for black to free his game by playing d5 later and thus ensures white a long term space advantage it's very difficult to play against it so knight g e7 and h4 from Kasparov which is an aggressive move that exploits the fact that Spielman doesn't have a knight at f6 it's aimed to loosen up black's king's side so that castling there is not quite as safe and it does weaken white's king's side too but Kasparov's careful to make sure that this doesn't become an issue Spielman met this move with h6 so that should Kasparov now play h5 he can answer safely enough with g5 and bishop e2 is what Kasparov did play, which is an awkward move for Spielman to meet. And after play after having played h6, he is unlikely to castle kingside because he's weakened his pawn structure there. But castling queenside won't be easy either because his queen and bishop are still undeveloped. And Spielman found the correct reply, which was f5, because this allows him to develop his pieces more freely and in particular get his bishop and queen out of the way so that he can castle. Play then continued, e takes f5, knight takes f5, knight takes f5, bishop takes f5, queen d2, and queen d7 is preparing queenside castling, but perhaps better here was queen f6, because now the queen is still eyeing the weak pawn on h4, and black has good pressure down the long diagonal. So queen d7 anyway, Kasparov castle kingside, and Spielman castle queenside. And at this stage it's starting to look like a wild game and for the moment the position is just about equal. There may even be a slight advantage to black. And Kasparov has to act quickly or he'll re regret having played h4 in the opening as black's pieces aren't far from coordinating for a dangerous attack. This rook here on the h-file and their queen and bishop you know raining down on white's kingside. And now came a great move to open lines from Kasparov with b4, and it threatens b5, which would win the pawn on a7 with his bishop here after the knight moves, and declining the exchange of pawns here and hoping to defend with something like king b8 gives white a very dangerous attack after b5, knight e5, knight d5, g5, it's best play from both sides a4, knight g4, bishop takes g4, bishop takes g4, and the strong sacrifice bishop takes a7 check. Now king takes a7, b6 check, c takes b6, and a5 just cracking holes in black's defense. And b5 is uh, the best move for black here. If bishop takes a1, then a takes b6 check. King b8 is the only move to avoid mate, and now rook takes a1 with a massive advantage to white over six pawns, and his attack here will win the game easily. The main threat is rook a8 check, and after king takes a8, queen a5 check with a 
very strong attack. It's very hard not to get mated, in fact, for black. Um, a sample continuation goes, say, for example, queen f7, which is giving the, the uh, king an escape route. But now queen a5, king c8, followed up with queen b5, and black is totally helpless. He has no escape route now, and the main threat is rook a8, which will be mate now. And, yeah, it's completely winning for white. So, b5 is the correct move here. Uh, but now comes queen e3 check, king b8, a6, queen c6, a7 check, king a8, and rook a5 gives white a decisive attack. So it's much better to accept the exchange of pawns offered earlier, and that's what Spielman played after b4 from Kasparov, he played knight takes b4. And then came knight b5, which is a great move from Kasparov, effectively a pawn sacrifice in order to get more active pieces. And it also discovers an attack on the knight at b4 and offers Spielman the win of the exchange. This bishop, or sorry, this rook here, is, can be taken by the bishop. Um, but it wouldn't be wise to accept it now. Let's have a quick look as to why. If bishop takes a1, now comes queen takes b4, and then bishop e5 to preserve the bishop, but it involves a dangerous loss of tempo. And black is now three points of material up, but he will lose that and more due to the strength of white's attack. Best play continues. Bishop f3, c5, knight takes a7 check, king b8, and queen a3 with the strong threat of knight b5 and then a mating attack. And the best way for black to meet this is with queen c7 because now knight b5 can be met with uh, queen b6 defending these two important squares and black can defend okay but now white has the move g4 which is forcing the bishop to retreat to d7 and um, rook b1 can be played now and the, that's the point of playing g4 is to remove the bishop from this from this diagonal and note that after g4, if instead of bishop d7, bishop c2, in order to keep the defense of b1, now comes rook c1, rook hf8, knight b5, queen b6, bishop d5, and black's light square bishop is trapped. He has no decent squares to go to. So d7 is the correct move. And now rook b1, and white has a crushing attack after rook df8, bishop d5 with queen a6 to follow and it's really not looking good at all for black. So, it's no good to uh, to take the rook and knight c2 is what Spielman did play which was the best move available to him and now came an incredible move from Kasparov with bishop f3 which shows incredible skills of calculation because now any piece capture from Spielman is a very bad idea. Let's have a look at a couple. Um, again, if bishop takes a1, now comes knight takes a7 check, king b8 and rook b1 incredibly is winning for white. Best play continues, c5, knight c6 check, king c8, queen a5, Knight b4, it is the only defensive move that black has other than sacrificing his queen, but that would fail too. Let's have a quick look at that. If queen takes c6, then bishop takes c6, b takes c6, queen a7, and white has a big advantage over three pawns. Best play continues, knight b4, rook takes b4, c takes b4, bishop b6, rook h7, queen a8 check, king d7, Queen takes d8 check, king e6, queen e8 check, rook e7, queen takes c6, etc. It's easily winning for white. So after knight b4, rook takes b4. And again, white is easily winning. If uh, c takes b4, then it's made in 3 with queen a8 check, king c7, bishop b6 check. Very nice sacrifice. 
forcing king takes b6 and now queen a5 is a mace. Okay, that's the end of part one.